WBXO Classic Rock Redefined, a special edition on the Pat Show today. Honored to have one of the founding members and drummer of the great 80s hard rock band Kingdom Come, Mr. James Kotak. James, what's going on, man? Hey, it's another beautiful day in LA, and I'm just about, we got a Kingdom Come rehearsal to do, and a little bit of this and that, and uh, it's, uh, as we always said when I was with the Scorpion, uh, Still loving you, Poughkeepsie. <laughs> um, oh, God, we, we would say it all the time because it was, it was just one of those things because we played there. I, I think I played there with Scorpions three times or Kingdom Come twice. Oh, yeah, we, I've seen... It's one of those things we always be just kind of sad in, in just... I love it. I've seen you a couple of times. Definitely. James and Kingdom Come is re-energized and recreating the past again. Coming to the Chance in Poughkeepsie on October 20th. Opening up with Zebra and guaranteed that show would be sold out. I gotta say, James, great to hear Kingdom Come is back. I'm guessing with the 30th anniversary, was that pretty much the main factor to fire up the engines and get things back going again? Well, actually, when uh, Scorpions announced the farewell tour in 2010, uh, I go, okay, well, we have to do stuff that's up on Project Rock, and I have my own band, Kotak, and then I go, I've already been talking to Lenny, the uh, original singer, for a couple of years about it, and we, all the guys were, so then 2013, we actually all played together here in L.A., we had a few dates booked, and then I got the call from uh, Scorpions going, hey, James, you know what? We decided uh, we're not going to stay farewell after all. We're going to send another album. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can you not play with anybody for a while? And we're going, oh, Jesus. And uh, so it, it was what it was, but my allegiance was always with uh, Scorpions. And uh, but we were able to get back to it now. I, I, I had a much needed break. And uh, so everything's up and running, man. It's, it's, a, it's a big job. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, yeah, we got to touch upon your great career with the Scorpions. And uh, I, I know everybody, you know, you, you're kind of a little break away. But uh, I know those guys love you to death. And I know you guys love them to death. A, a great career with them guys. Now, speaking back to Kingdom Come, it's all the original guys except Lenny. And I did read that Lenny announced that he will not be rejoining. But he's given certainly all his blessings to move forward with the band. Exactly. We talked up till November, and, he said, and then he finally, just uh, early January, said, you know what? I've retired. Because he announced his retirement about a year ago. And then I go, oh, come on. Just come and do it. And I go, ah. Oh. He just wants to stay in Hamburg and sit on his boat. And <laughs> <laughs> well... Replaced by the incredible Keith St. John, and I gotta say, man, that is a really great replacement. Keith from, uh, I remember Keith from Montrose uh, days, yeah. and I want to say Lynch Mob as well, man, so that's a really good fit. Yeah, it did. It's totally awesome. And, um, you know, uh, we, uh, uh, Keith and I have a, a, a similar box. I had a band called Wild Horses after King of Come. And we auditioned band 50, 60 Spirit, and I wanted Keith, but I got outvoted, so we went with the, another guy, and here we are today. And I, I also played on the, the Montrose Mean album, which came out in 1986 or 87. No. Yeah, no, I mean, full circle. I mean, I, I read, I, I want to say, yeah, I read that you were on the Mean album, and it was like Ronnie gave you pretty much your first big break, right? Back 85, 86? Absolutely. Uh, we opened for Ronnie on about 15 or 16 shows, my, my band from Louisville, because we had all the production and truck and everything. And uh, it was just like a dream come true. That was one thing. Then I got home, uh, we got home, and about a month went by, and all of a sudden we get a call. I get a call, and he goes, hey, James? I go, yeah, man. He goes, it's Ronnie. I go, Ronnie who? He goes, <laughs> Well, I thought it was dumb nuts, you know, or something like that. And I, I literally dropped, when he asked me to play on the album, I literally dropped the phone. It, it was a real dream come true. Yeah, man. And you want to talk about timing is everything. You guys, you know, you get, well... With Kingdom Come, I want to say, you know, you guys rocked it, and then Van Halen calls you, and you're on this big Monsters of Rock stadium tour with the Scorpions and Doc and the Metallica. I mean, you can't, and then MTV on top of that, you can't ask for anything more than that. How insane was that? It was totally insane. Our, the first show we ever played was back in, like, late May, and it was uh, it was three sold-out days in, in uh, um 
oh dang, it was Alpine Valley in Wisconsin. And man, it was just like, we had no idea what to expect because we'd been in Europe for the previous three months. And you know, communication back then, you didn't get it instantly like now. So we were going, the man kept, kept telling us, going, man, boys, things are getting really out of hand over in the U.S. When you get back, you're going to freak out. And sure enough, we got off the plane, we, uh, the cars were there to pick us up, and they handed us all gold records. <laughs> wow. I know. I, like, I, I, I'm, I, you know. I'm so thankful and grateful for all of that. I mean, you got to pinch yourself going, really? Is this really happening? We're going on a, the monsters around. And it's a, you know what? Kingdom Come's a perfect fit for all those other great bands. I mean, it was a, it, you know, when I look back and I think of the Monsters of Rock tour and I think of Kingdom Come, I go, man, that was a perfect fit for you guys, whoever arranged that. Oh, it was you. right on. And I am so, I'm so psyched, man, that you guys are. Are kind of regrouped and ready to rock and roll again because I, you guys had that, you know, everybody laughed. I, I said, man, that bluesy rock, you know, I know there was a lot of people comparing you to Zeppelin, but it was, it was a really good sound and the hits. I mean, I always, I, I like, do you, I mean, I was always a big fan. Get it out. Do you like it? I mean, what love can be? I mean, you know, and then all of a sudden it just fell apart. I'm like, no, nah. everybody's like, no, no, no. But you know what happens. It's rock and roll. It happens. And as fast as it's starting, it, it, it's, there, there's just a lot of things I can't really discuss about it. But, uh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, no. I, you know what? I, I say to everybody... You know, think about what those guys went through. It had, part of it had to be burnout. You know, you didn't get a break at all. And I'm sure with the record company say, hey, put out another album and, and go, go, go. Back in the 80s, you, you tell me, it was nonstop touring. It's not like what you can set up today, pretty much. Am I wrong? Um, well, you know what? Actually, more, if you know, the, the, there are more bands touring now than ever because album sales are down. The record labels are not around anymore, and that's your number one bread and butter, that and merch. And yeah, there's some bands that sell some albums, but for the most part, it's, uh, you know, it's not what it used to be, that's for sure. Oh, um, yeah. No complaint here. Oh, no doubt, but thank God I am in a classic rock independent station where I create my own playlist. I am a rarity, my man, and I could play King you. I could play Kingdom Come every day, every show, with nobody asking any questions. So I love doing what I can do. That is, that's almost like being at, uh, having a college station where you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, dude. I, you know, uh, it, it'll be fun when we come there if uh, we can have a chance to, you know, hook up and, and say hello and visit or whatever. And you're, of course, I want you to have the show if you can. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd be, I'd be looking forward to it. In fact, I do the, I do a dice game. So if you got a new album coming out, I meet the bands and I have you roll five dice. And if you could total a five of a kind in three rolls, I play your entire album, new album. Oh, I like that game. So I, I, I just started it up, and I've done it with everybody from Night Ranger and Mark Slaughter and Great White and all the everybody just loves it. Have we having a blast with it? We videotape it, so I put it on my YouTube channel, and you guys we share it with you guys, and it's been a. I never thought I'd be known as the New York Dice Guy, but you know what? I, whatever works to promote you guys and help you get out, keeping new music alive on the airways is what I do. So. It's all good. Well, that's totally mentioned, man. So we need, we need more guys like you. Well, that's what I, that's what I hear. That's, I'm working on it, man. So uh, you're you're on your way to rehearsal. What's it like bringing back the memories, hanging out with uh, you know Johnny B and Danny and Rick? Well, you know we've all stayed in touch over the years. Rick and I have been working together off and on. Oh, man, I just hit the curve. Rick and I have been working together off and on for like 35 plus years, and uh, we're both from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, and, you know, we all kind of stayed in touch. It's really odd. And when we got here, we, we, it, when Johnny and Danny arrived, we went out for a little dinner. Everything just clicked. And Keith fell right in. It's, it's an amazing fit. It's crazy. Well, I'm, I'm happy for you guys, and I know uh, I'm going to ask you a question, and I know it's pretty early yet, but you guys are all successful songwriters, and I know you want to at least kick off this 30th anniversary tour. But hopefully, there's plans in the future, maybe for a new album, and we can get you to roll the dice. I just, are you kidding? <laughs> um, it's, we're, we're taking things slow, first things first. Right. This tour got to get out there. We 
meet some people, test the water, and you know, just like really, once you get into a tour like three weeks in, this is only like six weeks, and you you start to realize what the people want. And that's the most important thing, because a lot of them, people don't want a new album, but there'll probably be one anyway eventually. Yeah, you know, it, a lot of people say that, but then it gets, you know, for you as an artist, you want to keep creating, and you know, it's been a bunch of years, and now you sit back with the guys, and you can reflect on the 30 years, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that you want to throw out there, so, although people say that, I think people say that because it's hard, I mean, nowadays, they, they streamline it and get it for free, which is ridiculous, I encourage people to buy this stuff, and, I, and I'm playing as much as I can new music in my three hours. We show as much as I could. So, but we're looking forward to come back to Poughkeepsie, James. <laughs> you James Kotak and the guys from Kingdom Come heading to the chance at Poughkeepsie on Saturday night, October twentieth, with Zebra. Man, James, thanks for your time, man. My best to you. My best. Yeah, my. No, here's on KingdomComeBand.com and all the usual social media, Twitter, Facebook. And just stop by and say hello, you know? We absolutely will. You got James at KingdomComeBand.com for all the dates all around. And we're looking forward. Send my best to all the guys and looking forward to you here in October. All right, brother. Thank you so much for your time. And have a great day and play that rock and roll forever. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, my man. Safe travels. Have a great day, man. Bye now. Uh